Welcome to healthdetective.co.nz, where we solve your health mystery. My name is Dr. Sam Shea. Today's mystery, we're going to cover whole hand pain. Now, it doesn't necessarily have to be pain. It could be coldness, numbness, tingling, or weakness. General, just problems with the whole hand. Now, this is distinguished from, say, problems with the pinky and this side of the ring finger. That's ulnar neuropathy, which we covered in another video. Or these three fingers and this side of the ring finger. That's median neuropathy, which we covered in another video. We're talking about the whole hand here. Yes, it is possible to have both ulnar neuropathy and median nerve neuropathy at the same time, but it's not always the case. Instead, it's probably something called thoracic outlet syndrome, where you've got pain in the whole hand, and it comes upstream from, it's called the thoracic outlet, because you've got these outlets around your thorax where the artery or vein can get crushed. Now, if it's the whole artery and the whole vein going to the hand, it's these things, those artery vein that irrigates the whole arm, so it's the whole hand that's going to be affected, not one side versus the other. So that's why if you have whole hand pain, it's usually not just an ulnar nerve and a median nerve combined, it's usually the artery and or vein that's being crushed upstream. So there's three spots where it can get crushed. One, first one is here at the pec minor. The pec minor attaches at ribs three, four, and five, and then at this tip of the uh, shoulder blade that actually kind of pokes forward called the coracoid process, that can crush, if that's spasm, especially if our shoulders are rolled forward a lot from driving and typing or being stressed out, it can actually crush the artery in the vein. The second place that it can uh, crush is between the first rib and the collarbone. So the artery and the vein actually travel in between them and if the first rib is elevated or the muscle that connects between the first rib and the collarbone called the subclavius is really spasm that can warp it out of place, then you can uh, occlude or crush on the artery or, or the nerve by raising the first rib up and crushing it against the collarbone. The third place is between these two muscles here on the side of the neck called the anterior middle scalene, which is a fancy way of saying the front scalene and the side scalene or the middle scalene. So the, the artery in particular can get crushed in between those two scalenes, whereas the, the vein can get crushed between the collarbone and the first and the, uh, the front scalene. So that's what the cause of thoracic outlet syndrome. Now, the good news is, is you can treat this without surgery. Now, surgery for this is really scary, okay? What they do is they take out that muscle on the neck, which is really close to all the really important arteries and veins that go up to your brain and near your heart, and they take out the first rib. Now, the first rib sounds benign because it's a tiny rib, but that's sitting right on top of the lungs, like literally right on top of it. So. If you're removing that rib, you are right next to the lungs, right next to your vital arteries. It's a very scary surgery, very dangerous, and there's a lot of, re you know, it's just a long time to recoup. It's not, it's not benign. So you really want to see, do whatever you can to avoid that surgery. And I'm going to show you how to do it. First is to locate the problem. Well, if you've got the pec minor between the first rib and the collarbone and between the two scalenes, then you apply non-surgical based treatments. Now, it is possible to treat this without surgery. I've done it. So how do you do it? You treat the opposite leg using acupuncture. Now I do a particular system called Dr. Tan's Balance Method. I love this system because I don't put needles around the neck that's in pain or spasmed or anything. I don't put needles in the hands that are... No, you do the opposite leg. It's kind of like double negative. So double negative, the opposite body part and the opposite channel, it will double negative back and relieve the pain in the area that's causing the problem. Now, that will then free up my hands because I'm not jostling needles doing myofascial or soft tissue work. I'm not worried about jostling needles because the needles are on the opposite leg, so I don't have to worry about it. So that's great. I can get the benefits of acupuncture as well as apply the skill sets of my hands-on work, working on muscles, soft tissue, and ligaments, I can even adjust the joints, like the first rib and the collarbone. I can then look at biomechanics. A lot of people develop thoracic outlet syndrome, especially when they wake up in the morning and their hands are numb or cold or in pain, because when they sleep on their side, their shoulders roll forward. Uh, whether they're sleeping on that shoulder side or they're sleeping on the opposite side, it kind of rolls forward due to gravity. So you can do a lot by helping sleep position. You can look at how you're typing, how you're working, how you're on your bike 
because all these things slump the shoulders forward, which can especially affect the pec minor compression. The other things you can do is look at topical and internal ways to reduce inflammation. So ways to reduce inflammation topically is using natural, you know, natural compounds to reduce inflammation. There's plenty of those available. I prefer a couple in particular. Then there's internally reducing the inflammation by reducing the things that are driving your body burden of inflammation up. So if you've got a level of inflammation and uh, problematic inflammatory chemicals in your body at the injury site, you also have a body burden. So if you increase your body burden, then you're going to create more problems in the site of injury. So we can treat the injury, but we can also treat the body burden of inflammation to accelerate the progress of healing in the injured area, whether it's here or problems in the hands. So that's kind of a holistic approach, a non holistic, non-surgical, non-drug approach to treating thoracic outlet syndrome. So if you struggle with whole hand pain, and your life is being compromised, you can't do what you need to do, whether you're a musician, a body worker, a mechanic, or a parent, or any, any, you know, a writer, or anything you need your hands for, please contact me at healthdetective.co.nz. That's www.healthdetective.co.nz, and I'd be happy to help you. Thank you.